morning. Good morning. Praise Good the Lord. Lord. Praise the Lord. I greet all the saints and the men of God and servants of the Lord. Uh, and I just want to count it a privilege and an opportunity that uh, Pastor Light has given me. I thank God for that. And uh, as I, we are going to share with you in prayer, as we pray after the mantle of D.L. Moody. Uh, firstly, I would like to just to give you a little background or a little short, I believe, and I know that uh, as we have been told after, before that, that you should look, go and search and find out about how God used this man of God. Uh, D.L. Uh, Moody, his name in full is Dwight Lehman. Uh, he was born in Massachusetts, in North uh, East uh, Northfield in America, and uh, he was born. He was the fifth born of uh, nine children of his family, and we thank God that he was a. He, he, though he didn't reach to, he, is, he left school in uh, third grade because of some challenges that his father died as well as early in his fifth year birthday. And uh, we thank God, even though that uh, God uses men whom he wants to use. So Dwight was one of the children. He worked in the farm as early before uh, he reaches his teenage. So at the age of 17, he left uh, his family, going to Boston, uh, where he, there were two there were two uh, uncles of him that were working there as a shoemaker, as a shoe sales people. And uh, because of that he needed to, to go on in life, he was so happy that he, even though he left his mom and other siblings, uh, and then he went to, 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 to Boston. And uh, one of his uncles, as uh, Uncle Samuel and Lemuel, but he worked with uh, Uncle Samuel, whom he was the owner of the shoe uh, stores. And then he gave him some rules. As young as he was on the 18th year, uh, from 17th year to 18th year, uh, he told him that uh, there will be no drinking, there will be no smoking, no chewing of any some kind. And then you have to go to my church every Sunday. Those were some of his uh, prerequisite rules that he, if he want to stay and work with uh, Uncle Samuel. And then he also gave him, uh, because he, he, as young as he was, he started by working around the place, pushing the broom, sweeping around the place. Uh, as he was there, uh, going to Sunday school, because he was asked that he should be attending church as one of the reason why he's supposed to be, to be as he is, is, will be there, that he must attend church. So on the first Sunday that he went, there was a man by the name of uh, Edward Kimball. It was one of the Sunday school teachers there. And uh, he taught them about the love of God. And then because uh, our brother uh, or uh, D.L. died. He was not used to the to, to, to that. Though he was he was raised at in his home back home, his mother has used as as taught them that they should be prayer people. So he then, uh, Mr. Campbell, uh, during the week while he was at work at his uh, uncle's uh, shop. He came around and then he showed up there to him. And then he was so reluctant, not knowing how to start to tell uh, Dwight or GL about Jesus Christ. But he take courage and then he went to him and then he talked to him about the love of God. And that's when then Dwight started uh, knowing that God loves him. And then he rededicated his life to God and become a child of God. So days later, as he continued uh, working in those true uh, store, he was making a lot of money and he had goals that he wanted to reach. He wanted to reach uh, 
hundred thousand uh, dollars in his life that he can do. However, because God do his own things uh, by his own way and the, the way that he, he wants. So it was a different story for Dwight because God made him to change his uh, mind and then started seeking to, to work for the Lord. And uh, as he goes along in his Christian life, he had met many different men of God whom were the teachers of the way. There was one uh, that he told him that he should know that there is nothing that he can do unless he concentrate his life aside for Jesus Christ so that he can be able to serve God according to the way that the Lord wants him to do. So there were things that uh, Edward, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, uh, DL, so much has concentrated on. He abhors and he strongly disapproved biblical criticism. And he was also not uh, in favor of any theory of evolution. Instead, he intensely wanted to preach the word of God and in an old fashioned gospel way emphasizing that there's a literal interpretation of the Bible and looking towards pre-millennial pre uh, in regeneration of second coming of Jesus Christ. He supported various charities in his time and he also believed in social problems that uh, they cannot be able to solve unless the one, one individual has got a divine regeneration by Jesus Christ. And he also had some things that he did. He, he established a school, though he was not really, he has, he was not learned, but God, because he used him according to his own way, he founded a seminary for girls. He founded the, the Chicago Bible Institute in 1889, and which, uh, at the moment, uh, uh, later at the time, it was called the Moody Bible Institution. But there are things that I want to us to look at that he believed in. He believed that he, as a thorough person, he, that we must fully be surrendered to the to, to 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 the love of God and to the work of God, and we must be consecrated, and that we must love to tell people about Christ, as one says that. Plain man who preaches the plain gospel plainly. This was one of his motives that we should do that as clear as we can. And that the gospel of Jesus Christ that is for everyone. And that is the only thing that can bring us to the same level at the foot of the cross. So D.L. Moody. So as we are talking about and asking God today as in this platform, to come to do the will of God, let us look at the three things that I can take as one of our, our prayer point this morning, that we should maybe if we need to really be pleasing and to do the will of God, is that we should be consecrated. What is consecration? Consecration is dethroning ourselves and enthroning Jesus Christ as Lord, in our life. And it is a complete divestiture of all self-interest. Consecration can also realize that is giving God the veto power, the total power over our life. Surrender, sur surrendering all of, of you to all of him. And consecration, we can also look at it as an ever deepening love for Jesus Christ. And it is also childlike trust in our heavenly father. So this morning, as we start praying, can we go to the law and give everything with all our hearts and with all our minds, totally surrendering unto Jesus Christ, that the Lord God is the one who does the work. All of what we have to do as servants of the Lord is to consecrate ourselves, is to give ourselves 
is to surrender all our life to you, to him, so that he can be able to use us and to be able to take us through to, for his purpose into this world. So I would like us firstly that we should uh, unmute yourself and then start praying, asking God that we, for, for us to say and that we must concentrate ourselves wholly to him as the word of God says in Joshua chapter three, verse five, that Moses, uh, is it Joshua, while he told the children of God that God want to meet you, he said, consecrate yourself, take, put yourself aside and then for the work of the Lord. So as the men and women of God, as we are here on this platform, that we are to pray for our family, pray for our nation, pray for our leaders. Can we come to the Lord this morning and ask God, to give us that kind of impartation that he has put on his servant before who walked before us, like the likes of D.L. Moody, that we should consecrate, that we should give our life to God so that God can use us for his glory. So can we unmute ourselves and start praying and asking God that God may use us, that we should, as we surrender ourselves, by surrendering ourselves, as also in the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2 says that we should give ourselves unto God for his work. So can we unmute ourselves and start just asking God and let God, let his will and his spirit use us in his glory. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Father, Father, God, in the name of Jesus, right now, Father, we surrender our lives to you, Lord. Lord surrender our lives to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, surrender everything. He gave us this opportunity. In this way, to the Ganga, all rights out to Oanga as the throne ourselves, throne ourselves, and we surrender our lives to you, Lord. And they will take us over to the world and throne the Lord. They might never be treated as you rule and reign, Lord. In the name of Jesus, help us to continue and serve and reign as we are yourselves. Father, we thank you for your grace. Father, we give you the glory. Oh, Father, we give you all the honor as we come to it in the name of Jesus. The Lord, use us for your glory. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, let our lives be surrendered to you. Lord, we may recognize you every second. It is your will that we should be able to love you and do everything according to your will. In Jesus' name. Shine, Lord, and 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 Lord, power of God over the preachers, over the congregation, over saints, and all the missionaries, and that God may also have mercy for those that we are preaching to, those that we are sharing the word of God with, to convict them through so, so that they can be able to hear the word of God. And though that is one of, uh, of the prayer items that I, I would like us that we should maybe lift up as to pray for the power of God over his saints, saints over his servants, over his uh, uh, people that he's using to reach to the souls. And again, also to God, to, to ask God for the revival, for the power of the Holy Spirit over the body of Christ. And as this, it is one of the things that God, so that we, he can be able 
to open our eyes, open our spirits to serve him with thorough mind, with understanding, and without any reservation, knowing that we should we recognize that every second of our time belongs to God and every one of our energies and every penny of our monies that we have, they are all gifts from God and for God. So therefore, we should rededicate ourselves as we pray for the power of God, that in all what we do, as we ask for God's revival, for us to get the revival, we need to pray to God to bring that revival through his Holy Spirit by quickening the men and women of God, remind, reminding us what Jesus has done and that today we are here, we can be able to congregate together is because of the love that he showed us so that we can, when we go out there and to reach to others, we can do it with all open hearts and with the love, the same love that Jesus had with us. But we need to pray because it's only through the power of the Holy Spirit, through the power of God, that we can be able to reach the rest of the world according to God's purpose, as it is his will that no one should die, no one should perish, because all he has made us for his glory. So let us unmute ourselves and ask God for power of God over all of us, so that we can be able to do the work according to the gifting that he has given us in all the very ministry, ministry and also for the congregation, also praying for those that are not yet even in the, in, 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 in the house of God, because even Jesus Christ himself prayed that prayer, that I pray even for those that are not yet here. So as he prayed for his disciples. So even today, as we pray, let us have this attitude of such kind of consecration like that of our past generals like D.L. Moody, who had such a passion and such a love to reach to the world. We know that uh, in, at his early time of his ministry, he even because of not having a, a, a opportunity to be preaching in the church that he was attending, but he went out and reached to the young one. He started Sunday school. The most first time biggest Sunday school that ever was established in US or in United States of America. That was through D.L. Moody, where he started with the young one. He went to everyone every place. He had no discrimination. He had nothing to do with any color or any racism, but because of the love that was on his heart to, to work for the Lord, to do what God has purpose for him. So let us unmute ourselves, asking God for his revival over all the people, over all nations, over all God, God's people and preachers of the way, missionaries, all the congregations, that no one should be left, but all that we shall be able to receive the part that we need to do as the body of Christ. And after that, after our prayer, after we are meeting ourselves and pray, then I will hand it back over to Pastor Lad. And thank you very much for the opportunity for starting this morning together as we pray in the name of Jesus. Can we unmute ourselves and ask Jesus, God's give power praise, for the Holy God, Spirit for the Bible and to pray for the people to the saints of God. God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come, we come Father, before God, your we are throne, asking Lord, you, Lord, to we pour out your spirit, the Father God, in the name of Jesus, to go to an Amanda, or as you did before, God, Sam and Amanda, to go to an when you poured out your spirit upon your disciples, upon the believers, God, Sam and Amanda, to go to an oh yes, Father, they were born, Father, they were forced, Lord, for the most fair, Father, in the name of Jesus, to go to an Amanda, Father, the name of Jesus, Father, Father, there is nothing that we do. We are asking you to go to your spirit to put upon us, Lord, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I just pray that I will be the Lord, I just pray that I will be the Lord, I just pray that I will be the Lord,
Jesus mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus we give you glory in Jesus name amen 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 and amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Kodiso. May the Lord bless you abundantly. Thank you for being a vessel this morning. All right.